Hi, so I'm Donald Land. i am uh, been a chemist, an analytical chemist and forensic chemist for about 30 years. At Halent Laboratories, I'm the chief scientist and president, which means I oversee kind of all of the technological directions that we're taking. Uh, I'm Reverend Dr. Kimran DeCesar. I'm laboratory manager at Halent Laboratories. I manage protocols and quality control at the laboratory. So the procedure obviously starts at the dispensary. So we like to have our, our own couriers come to the, the site. We want to make sure that we get a representative sample and not just the best bud or the worst bud of a bunch. Make sure that appropriate chain of custody is started there, which is critical. So there's a an ID tag number that goes along with that sample and follows it from beginning to end from the very point we pick it up to the last time when we send out a report. Then they would bring it back to me. Then I would check those numbers to make sure that everything is copacetic. After that, I would start a microscopic procedure and visual uh, inspection. And look for infestations of mold or fungus and things like that. After the microscopic was done, then next it would go back to our, our prep room where samples would have to be weighed out for sampling purposes, then they would have to be processed in the preparation, including extracting and grinding of the procedure. There's a lot of different compounds in each sample, and we only want to measure a certain subset, the subset that are the cannabinoids, and the subset that are pesticides or residues of mold, which are called mycotoxins. Making more serial dilutions after that to make sure that we, we approach the concentrations we need to run in our instruments. Then it would go back to the instrument room where it would be put into sample vials that are used in our LC mass spec. And then the samples would be run in the machine, which is automated. After the machine is done, the data is then taken on the computer and all of it's evaluated. And we look, of course, not, for the, not just for the obvious things, but any abnormalities, uh, normalizing the data, making sure it's appropriate before we send it out. A method that will allow us to separate identify and quantitate over 30 pesticides, uh, the five most important mycotoxins, and 15 now cannabinoids. It's at that time that we would make a decision about whether we felt that there was something that we thought was suspicious or something we were uncomfortable with. We wanted to run second or third samples, more standards as need be, to make sure that we're confident that the answers we're getting are the correct ones. We put together a, a report, and that report then gets actually emailed out to our clients and the clients get it within 72 hours. We know, according to a lot of literature that's been out there a very long time, that in the last 10 to 14 days, the cannabinoids can double or triple in concentration. What you can do with these instruments is you can sample like once a week or even once every few days, measure that rate as it goes up and, and, and plot and predict more accurately. My name is Paul. I volunteer at Florin Wellness Center and we're in Sacramento, California. Testing generally helps our facility Based off of when you come into the dispensary, you have so much turnover, things are here one day, sometimes they're not. What that helps is, is people stop looking for certain strains and now they can base off testing numbers. So instead of coming in and looking for the pre-98 you loved last week, we can find you an indica around 18%, um, maybe like 0.3 CBD, and just be able to vary it off that. So it's actually became choosing medicine a lot easier. Even though we just showed THC, CBD, CBN, we're still testing for your molds, pesticides, and all of those, so everything that comes in is definitely clean. Now, something I have to constantly remind people of is that within the United States of America, any product that goes inside a human body or on a human body has to have appropriate testing through the FDA Title 40 for dangerous materials, whether it's pesticides, mycotoxins, if it's something where heavy metals like lead may be, they have to test for those for certain products. Then the second thing is they have to have appropriate labeling that tells all the active ingredients and the extra ingredients. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a can of Coca-Cola or a hair shampoo that you put on your head. Same thing needs to be done here and all these different aspects I just explained. And so all of those things now can assure the dispensaries that when they sell a product to a patient, that patient is getting a safe product. So now it's down to states to do it individually, one by one, and it means that all the dispensaries, um, the growers and vendors, the patients, we all need this information to protect the public and to allow them to be a better advocate of their needs.
The majority of laboratories currently out there are using the methodologies that have been available for the last 50 years. A, a more modern instrument that's only been available for about the last 15 years in any practical way has been liquid chromatography mass spec. The reason we chose that particular instrument is with gas chromatography you can only basically analyze for the neutral cannabinoids like delta 9 THC. Uh, however, we now know, especially since people have started analyzing the beginning of this new century, we're starting to focus on all the acid groups as well. So if there's a delta 9 THC, there's a delta 9 THC acid. And that's true with all of the cannabinoids. Uh, and different, different cannabinoids have been shown to have even anti-cancer behavior in lab studies. So patients in the next few years are going to learn an incredible amount of information about how these different compounds can treat specific maladies that they may be suffering from. You can look at the different acids like CBGA, which basically is a measure of the success of the growth production of the other important psychotropic and other cannabinoids. And so if you want to determine as a, as, as a horticulturist which one of these particular plants you're growing in a given strain might be a better producer, you can look at those kind of numbers and that's one of the things we do for instance with with growers and through that growers can very rapidly take say a new strain that they're developing and learn very rapidly within the first generation can learn how to maximize what it is what quality is about that particular harvest that they want another way that we help the patients is actually by working not just with dispensaries, but for instance with people who create edibles or other things by helping them figure out what appropriate unit dosage is so it's not too much, not too little. It's even true with people who do things like concentrates. You have to be able to analyze the materials and find out what's in there. It also helps in, in an industrial scale to cut costs. Maybe they make can of butter the wrong way where they do so much heating that they're decomposing the THC, farming unwanted compounds like CBN. We're constantly adding new information to the website, what all we test for, how many cannabinoids we test for. Same thing with pesticides, mycotoxins, and any other recommendations that we feel are appropriate to make. And then of course there's a contact page if you drop a line to us there. We will definitely get it and we'll respond to you there. We also have a Facebook page, friend us, like us. One of the things that we're very proud of is, is because of the new information out there, medication-wise, about the acids and everything else, we've worked very hard to isolate as many cannabinoids as, as we can. Uh, till recently we were up to about 11 and we've just recently this week managed to isolate and standardize 15 cannabinoids which we now report on and we're working on isolating others. Um, that's why we like Kalen. It's, uh, it's on the new curb. Everything is right there. Um, the process they use is totally 21st century. They're basically the trending curb for what testing should be within the next 10 years.